Hey, what's poppin' everybody? Again, I'm gonna look like a bum because it's st heater's still broken and the house is absolutely freezing. So I just wanna be warm and I'm just gonna be a bum about it. All right, let's go ahead and recap yesterday. I uh, one in three day, rough day for us yesterday once again. Um, lock of the day was Stephen Curry over 30.5 points. Uh, I believe at 13 in the first quarter and then uh, kind of slowed down there in the second. I don't think he even scored in the second period. Um, hit two threes late, but then they started double teaming him like crazy. Just didn't get a shot really to take any shots late there. So if I was about four points shy, did Stephen Curry. Of course, the one time I would take him would be, the, the I think, his worst game of the year. I think 27 is the least he scored this season. Um, and then DeMontis Sabonis had a monster whale of a game, 25, 22, and 8. Like, holy mackerel. I uh, knew he was going to have a big game, but not that big. Get two for Sabonis. Um, and we took Zach Levine over 22.5 points. Um, he falls a bucket short. It was for 21, thanks to a Michael Porter Jr. masterclass. Uh, made that thing be a blowout early. Uh, hit a bunch of threes early. Got a bunch of points. I started hitting a bunch of late threes when, they, when the Bulls tried to go on a run. Um, Surprised he played as much minutes as he did, but at the end of the day, he did come a bucket short um, thanks to a blowout in that game versus the Nuggets. Uh, and then our last play of the day was Nicholas Claxton over 9.5 rebounds. Got five boards in 16 minutes and then got hurt. Um, yeah, so I, I picked another player that got injured. That's just tough. Um, tough a couple of breaks there. Um, just falling you know, a little bit short on some guys, and then a guy gets injured. So it's not a lot we can do there. Um, so on a little bit of a cold streak right now. But like I said, like I said yesterday on Instagram, Got to keep the eyes forward. Got to think long term because we are still up over 20 units this season. Um, just got to stay positive. You know, we're going to have good stretches, going to have bad stretches. We just came off an absolute heater of a stretch. Now we're going to come back down to earth a little bit. So um, that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's picks. Let's get it. Real quick, if you guys are new to Underdog Fantasy, in the link down in the description below, I have a uh, link that takes you straight to the App Store where you can download Underdog Fantasy because you're going to want to hop in on the action this year. They have added a whole bunch of new features to Underdog Fantasy this year. Um, starting with the brand new insurance feature, okay? This insurance feature is a new thing that has been uh, super requested uh, for, for the fans and the customers of Underdog Fantasy. Essentially, all you do is you click insurance right here. And all you, if you can see right there, all you have to do is hit for these picks to win, but the value does drop down. So if you turn off the insurance, you do a $10 bet, you obviously get $200. And if you turn on the insurance feature, it drops down uh, a multiplier down to 10. But if you miss one of these picks, say, you know, James Winston gets hurt or something, he doesn't end up throwing two touchdown passes. But everybody, hits, everybody else hits, like Lamar, Jonathan Taylor, uh, Derrick Henry, and Justin Jefferson. All these guys hit. You still hit the hit, or you still hit the slip. You just get it for $100. It just goes down a multiplier, which is a huge feature a lot of people have been asking for, so they received it. Also, they have added second half lines now to games. Obviously, it is on. Uh, there is nothing up because there's no NFL second half games, but they have added NFL second half. Um, so just like for the Thursday night game, I'll throw up that clip right here. Thursday night, they dropped all the second half lines for that Thursday night game between the Bills and the Rams. They've added a bunch of new features this year. They're trying to improve to get uh, the app better for you guys. Um, also, if, when you sign up, if you use code take my shot, you'll get $100 match, uh, up to $100 match and 100% deposit match uh, on your first time deposit. So if you do that, you can deposit $50 to get an extra, an extra $50, you know, $20 to get an extra $20. Um, whole lot of stuff coming with Underdog Fantasy this year. Make sure you sign up with code take my shot. Now let's get to today's bets. Hey, what's crack a lacking? There's the baby cameo. You guys finally get to see baby <laughs> Miles. It's freezing in that house. That's why he has pajamas on right now. But there he is, all redhead, blue eyes of him. He's I don't know why he's, he's redheaded right now, but it could change. But he does have blue eyes, which is pretty cool. There's Miles. There's the beautiful baby mama as well. Little cameo, so you guys can finally meet Miles. All right, let's go ahead and get into today's picks. So the lock of the day today is going to be a, a replete play from this earlier this year, but uh, we just can't ignore this one. We're going to go ahead and go with OG Ananobi today, over 22.5 points today versus the Detroit Pistons. Now, <laughs> the Toronto Raptors are going to be without Gary Trent Jr., Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam, and Preston Sachua tonight. That means this offense has to absolutely run through OG Ananobi tonight um, because of all the injuries to both the Pistons and the uh, Raptors because the Pistons are going to be without uh, Kate Cunningham. Uh, they are going to have this game at a four and a half point spread and a 220 total. So a very um, favorable total. Uh, it's not too little down in that 210 range, but it is getting close to the 230 range. So right in the middle there, right where I like a total to be. Um, and only a four and a half point spread. So, you know, a bucket or two games. So that's not too bad there on that spread there. Um, I'm thinking that Sadiq Bey will be his matchup defensively. Um, I'm also seeing a, probably an increase in minutes with a depleted roster. He's probably going to play even more minutes, which from a guy that already plays 35 minutes a game, um, for him to get even more minutes is huge. Um, I think really, realistically, the only thing that can stop OG tonight is going to be a bad shooting night. I don't think 
there's any way he doesn't get to this line. I um, mean, two games this year without Fred Van Vliet and Pascal Siakam, both not playing in, in, the, in a game, um, he's had 26 and 27. So there's no reason to think why OG can't hit this line. Again, the only reason I, I think he doesn't hit this line is a bad shooting night or a blowout. And I don't anticipate either of those two things to happen. So give me OG and Anobi today's a lock of the day over 22.5. All right, and our next two plays are going to be a lot of unders here. We're going to get back to our under grind here. We're going to go with John Collins today, under 6.5 rebounds versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, in two matchups this season, he has gone under in both of those games. And he has actually, in his last five matchups versus the Milwaukee Bucks, gone under in four. So one game he did have like a 12 rebound game, but outside of that, he has had very minimal success versus this Milwaukee Bucks team when it comes to rebounding the basketball. Obviously, it makes a lot of sense. All right, you got guys like Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, Giannis, obviously. They gobble up the glass. So it's very difficult to get rebounds versus this Bucks team. Um, and he's actually on a very cold streak right now. Is John Collins. He absolutely came out the gates red hot. A lot of people were playing John Collins at the beginning of the year. But he's actually gone under in five straight games. Has in, in some games, he has not even come close to the seven rebound line that he's looking at today. Um, Bucks hold opposing power forwards to the fourth least rebounds in the NBA. Um, seven out of the 12 guys that they have played this season um, have gone under there. Uh, opposing starting power forwards versus the Bucks are averaging seven rebounds right now. But I think it is worth noting that the last two guys they played was Paku from uh, OKC and Jeremy Sokan from the Spurs. They had 10 and seven. Those games were without Giannis. So a guy that's averaging 13 rebounds per game, not on the floor. Those two guys were able to kind of bump up the average. And those guys with Giannis on the floor probably would have gone under. And that would have made it nine out of 12 have gone under. Um, but obviously we'll go with what the numbers say, but those, it is worth noting for sure that Giannis didn't play in a game where Paku had 10 boards and a game where Sokan had uh, seven boards. So I'm liking the chances today for John Collins to continue to struggle, uh, rebounding the basketball, especially versus Milwaukee Bucks team. So give me John Collins today under 6.5 boards. All right, and our third play of the day will be coming from the early game slate. We're gonna head over to the Charlotte Orlando game. Give me PJ Washington under 19.5 PRA. We're gonna take the whole shebang here. We're gonna take the PRA. Orlando ranks ninth in rebounds, ninth in points, and fourth in assists. So they are a, a statistically a pretty close to elite defensive team versus power forwards. Um, Lamella Ball that I saw per ESP or Sports Illustrated is not on the injury report tonight. So I don't. Or I'm pretty sure Lamella is playing. I'm pretty sure he's full go. Or not exactly full go because he played Spurs last game, but I'm pretty sure he's go. He's to at least play tonight. Um, that takes shots, that takes rebounds, and that takes assists away from P.J. Washington because LaMelo uh, scores, rebounds, and assists really well. Um, in their last matchup they had earlier this season without LaMelo Ball, P.J. Washington only recorded six PRA in that game. Um, when you're thinking about what he's got to what he's got to battle through, def or you know, to get rebounds, to kind of score, he's got to go through Bull Bull, Paolo Bencaro, and Wendell Carter Jr. Paolo Bencaro, I heard, was full practice earlier today, so he should be good to go. Um, but just hasn't been officially listed as good to go. But he was a full practice the other day, or earlier today and yesterday. So um, Bull Bull, Paolo Bencaro, Wendell Carter, all really good rebounders, long guys. It's it's tough to get stuff inside versus this Orlando team. It shows statistically, defensively, and it's tough to get boards versus this team. And I think the only way he's going to hit this line is if he has, um, he, if, he, if he shoots a bunch of threes and he hits them. That's the only way I think P.J. Washington is going to hit this line. Um, he's just not going to get, he's, he won't get the assists, I think. It, I thought about taking the 18.5 points and rebounds because I don't think he'll get any, any assists anyway, but I really don't think he'll get any assists. It's going to be tough for him to get boards and he's not going to be able to score versus that length inside versus um, versus the Orlando Magic. Um, uh, I didn't want to necessarily just take the entirety of the season versus the Magic um, and match that up with PJ here because PJ, let's be real, is like the fourth option in his offense. It goes LaMelo, it goes Terry, it goes Oubre, then it goes PJ. So I kind of wanted to match him up against other guys that the Magic have played that are kind of that similar role to PJ. Um, Jabari Smith, I thought that Orlando, when Orlando played the Rockets, Jabari Smith is a pretty similar role. It goes Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr., Eric Gordon, then maybe Alperen Shangun, and then maybe um, Jabari Smith, right? Uh, he'd maybe even be a fourth, fifth option. He only had five PRA versus the Magic. Then you're looking at a guy like Mikael Bridges, who's maybe a third, fourth option, right? It goes Booker, Paul, then maybe Mikael and Aiden, you know, could be kind of interchangeable. He only had 18 PRA versus this Orlando team. Um, then you look at a guy like Draymond Green, right? Uh, definitely a fourth option, right? Curry, Wiggins, Clay, and then Draymond, right? And in that game, Draymond had 20 PRA, but he had seven assists. So PJ Washington won't have seven assists. So guys that have pretty similar... Um, rotational roles, value roles in their offenses um, versus Orlando have kind of struggled. So I didn't want to take the entire year's data 
and compare that to guy like PJ Washington because Julius Randle and PJ Washington have very defensive role or very different roles in their offenses and on their team. So I didn't want to compare those two together. So I think PJ has a tough night tonight against a long defensive team in the in the Orlando Magic. So give me PJ Washington tonight under 19.5 PRA. All right, which means the perfect three slip is the lock of the day. OG Ananobi over 22.5 points. Then give me John Collins under 6.5 rebounds and PJ Washington under 19.5 BRA, PRA versus the Orlando Magic as our perfect three slip today. All right, boys, time to get back at it. Time to get back to the basics. We're going to go back to the unders. Unders have played us a lot of success this season. So we tried to find some really good or really bad defensive matchups for players and try to take some unders today. Um, I know it might come back and bite me in the in the butt if he doesn't end up hitting, but I do think that the OG and Anobi over is just free cheddar. Um, I think that one has got to be just the automatic play. Even though I already played him, I think he was earlier this week even. Um, I am going to take OG and Anobi again today, but going to rock with some unders today because I really love these defensive matchups. And that's going to wrap up today's video today, guys. I will catch you tomorrow. Peace.